In this video, I'm about to share with you guys some tips on how you can get some crispy, clean footage of your next dance battle of all your friends and yourself. What's up you guys, this is Kai from Vertigo Vision and I'm bringing you this video today because recently I've been seeing a lot more posts of dance footage online. With social media and Instagram and YouTube being such a big part and bigger part of our lives every single day, we tend to record ourselves and post that footage online for people to see. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you a few tips I've learned over the last four or five years working under stance elements and by myself that can help you guys up your dance footage game. So a few days ago, I was shooting an open styles event. What I like to do for these events is I like to get there a little bit earlier before preliminary starts and see the floor, see the stage where the event is gonna be taking place, where the battles are gonna be held so that I can find the best angle around the perimeter. If you're looking to get high quality, nice looking footage of your subject, the most important thing you can do is find a great spot and a background to pick. When I pick a background, I like to ask myself these questions. What are the dancers wearing? What is the lighting like? And what is the background like? So in order to get a clear image of the dancer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they distinguish well from the background. If someone's wearing black in a poorly lit venue and it's a black background, then you're not gonna be able to see the dancer very well. What I like to do to avoid this is to take a look at what everybody's wearing, find an area or a nice angle where they're being lit or find a good background that is pretty light and make sure that I'm placing the dancer against that background. So you'll see in this last event that I shot that I previously took one angle and I tried to shoot the dancers from it, but I felt the lighting was not that great and the background was okay, but it felt a little bit messy and was kind of distracting away from the dancer. So I tried switching sides the next round and I found that when I was facing the mirror that the presentation of the venue looked really nice. So I ended up going with that. So once you've established your spot based off of the tips I gave you, you're going to figure out how you're going to shoot for the rest of the event. If you're just shooting one battle, then posture isn't too big of a deal. But if you want to be stable and you're shooting an entire bracket or multiple battles, I'd recommend sitting down in a crisscross position like I'm showing on screen and making sure that you're holding your camera supported by points of contact. And I'd put my elbows on my legs so that my camera has two points of contact to stabilize itself. And instead of using my arms to kind of turn with the battle, I'm trying to look at the screen, right? So instead I'm gonna use my upper body and torso to turn with my camera so that I can track the dancer. And the way Stance likes to shoot its battles is we like to keep our dancer centered so that when we cut it to Instagram format or a vertical format, it can easily be done so and your dancer is still centered. But you can do whatever you want. If you wanna make the compositions look a little bit more pretty, then you can go for that. Cause I've done that a few times and there's no rules to this besides making sure the dancer is clearly seen. I would say that's the priority. The last tip I have to share with you guys is a little bonus. Um, and this tip probably has helped me the most in capturing good battle footage is follow the action. And it aligns very well with what I was talking about with keeping the dancer centered because the dancer is the action. You want to follow him or her. But keep in mind that this is just a rule and you can break the rule if you feel like something else is going on in the scene. It does not hurt to capture the people who are also part of this communication because a battle is a conversation. And when you're telling a story, which is essentially what you're doing with every video, you wanna capture the story and follow the action. So that would be my biggest tip for you guys. If you take away anything from this video, follow the action. This has been my very brief tutorial video on how to capture battles. If you would like to see more videos and tutorials on battles and dancing, leave a comment below and I will deliver Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Vertigo Vision, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.